Shalom and welcome back to the Code Searcher for another Code Table. You guys, in the last video, I talked about something that I believe that I've saw um, in um, a a prophecy from Balaam. And I got to tell you, you guys, this is a this is a topic that has some you know skepticism. And, and believe me, I'm one of the biggest skeptics. But I want you to please consider the information that I'm going to present to you in just a few moments. Uh, because it is scriptural. Uh, whether whether you you know have issues rationally or cosmology, you know because your cosmology is different, please consider the information I'm about to present to you. Because um, this is not just you know something that's going to go away. Uh, I believe it is a thing that's happening right now, and it's causing issues to our planet. And I, and that topic is Planet X. Something that is perturbing our solar system, causing issues. I believe people are even feeling these um, anomalies. Um, please stay with me. So, um, this particular word that I want to explore in this presentation is the word Nibiru. I know that's a trigger word for many of you, and you, I probably lost some of you right there, but please consider what I'm about to show you because I'm finding overwhelming information in the text that this word is synonymous with a word that we as believers are very familiar with, and that is the word wormwood. But there's also a connection to the word planet X as well. And the simple fact that it's encoded so much leads me to believe that they're one and the same. We're talking about the same thing. Now, this has escaped me for a, a while. I could not reconcile why I was finding the word Nibiru in the text concerning catastrophic events until uh, I begin to see the rabbis talking about that. And so that's what I want to, I want to start off and showing you. So sh let me show you what I'm talking about now for years. Like I said, I couldn't reconcile why I was finding this word encoded. Uh, it, my first thoughts was maybe it's because the, uh, you know, the non non-believers and pagans and whatever, would uh, would be talking about this, and so obviously they would not use a biblical term like wormwood. But here's something that's really interesting that happened. I've been talking about it for probably eight years, nine years, something like that, going way back. You guys would have to Google it. It's around the time of Comet Elenin, um, because I was looking at a correlation between Elenin and um, this particular anomaly we're looking at. But if you look at... Rabbi Glazerson cited, for example, you can see he has numbers of Nibiru tables, okay? Several times, and going back at least six years, as I can see. But he wasn't always talking about this. I happen to remember it, uh, when someone asked him on one of his videos about Common Elenin if there was a connection to Nibiru. And he did a video about that. It's not up any longer. I can't find that one. Maybe some of you guys can find it. He does have another channel. But I did see um, a table that I'm very familiar with and was found by, not by rabbis, but by believers. Uh, I myself was one that worked on this particular table. We're going to look at this, a star that comes from Jacob. Now, this happens to be a prophecy from uh Balaam in Numbers 24. We're going to take a look at that real quick, but I just want to set a foundation that this is legit, that the rabbis have been seeing this in the, in the codes. They got it from believers, myself included in that, uh, before they started looking at it really seriously. But it occurred to me in contemplating this whole situation of why it's there and how it got the nomenclature Nibiru, and it's the Jews. This is not a term that Christians are going to use, even though they may use it loosely in Planet X and uh, uh, Wormwood. It comes from originally Stitchin, but then also the Jews. The Jews are looking for a literal star from Jacob, you guys. <laughs> and we're going to explore that because I believe I've solved that real and I understand. That. And it goes back to Je to Joseph's dream in the book of Genesis Um it's slipping me where that is. You can just Google it. It's Joseph's dream where he tells his brothers two different dreams. And one of those 
is about the 11 stars, Joseph being the, the 12th, but he is the observer in this. The 11 stars and the sun and the moon bowing down to him. Now, this is what got him in very big trouble with his brothers, uh, which he was sold into slavery into Egypt. And uh, th this was what started all that. You guys, there's something really deep here. Really deep. There's a connection between Isaiah 24 and Numbers 24. Let me just take you to, to what I'm talking about. Um, this is the prophecy from Balaam. Balaam is uh, kind of hired to curse Israel, and he can't do that. He knows Israel is blessed of Yahuwah, and, he, and he, he takes up this parable when he's in this trance, okay? So he's in a trance, and um, he's expressing what is going to happen in the future. Let me just get that to you. I want you guys to be able to see this. And there it is. This is where he says, um, where it says, and he took up this parable. Hang on, let me, let me move this out of the way so I can actually read. And he took up this parable and said, Balaam, son of Beor, had said, and the man whose eyes are open had said, he had said, which heard the words of Elohim and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty. Falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. This is a day vision. He's having, a, I've, I've had one of these, or a couple of these, where your eyes are, you're actually daydreaming, and you're seeing a vision of something that may be to come. And I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star from Jacob. Now, this is the key phrase that's really, really important, because this is what uh, Judah, the Jews, have picked up on the rabbis in particular, have picked up on and have looked for um, what this might be. So this takes us to our table. Okay, now, so I'm going to show you the exact text that we were just looking at right here in, in an amazing table. You guys, please stay with me on this. Please share this video uh, if you could. As you notice, this is a very narrow strip. Um, in the book of Numbers, you can see here to the right side, even though it shows 23, we are in the 24th chapter, as uh, you will see here just momentarily, you guys. Um, very small skip. We're talking about a nine in this particular. This is actually two tables that we're going to look at right here. And we're looking at a cylinder. Okay, if you remember me explain to you how these codes work and what, what we're actually looking at. Um, the reason why we have a margin on either side is because we're looking at a very narrow cylinder where this text is, is wrapped around, okay? Very narrow cylinder, very similar to uh, Isaiah 53 and the Messiah code. So the fact that we have all these anomalies in this narrow strip is very, very concerning. OK, not saying this is going to happen tomorrow. I have found a date. It does not indicate that this is an imminent danger. But you guys need to be aware that in both tables that I'm going to show you, one year exclusively comes up. And that is the latter part of 2024. And this is really interesting because this is the two bookends. This is the final bookend of the uh, great American eclipse that happened. With a few blood moons in the center of that, you guys, where the where the sun you know, goes across the United States in an eclipse, I don't have to tell you that that this is a big sign. You already know that. Now, here's what 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 tags along on that. In the latter part of 2024 is when I believe we will see this thing emerge. And I'm putting myself out there on this. I don't do that very often. So please take note of what I'm about to show you, okay? Because this is a very compelling code. In fact, this is a code of Yahweh, Yohevave, -Yoh Yahuwah, Yehovah, however you want to say his name. That is what we have here vertical, right here in the blue, starting with this cuff and uh, running up, is the code of Yehovah, okay? In the very same line, you got, we, we got Otiot. OTO is the word for signals. 
So the fact is signals and code of Yehovah all in one line. Now that's that's an amazing anomaly at a skip of nine, you guys. The, 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 this is astronomical here. When, when you look at the numbers, this is off the charts. Okay, so please stay with me. You have Yaakov or Jacob that is connected to Yod Bafe here. A star from Jacob, okay? For Jacob, this is a signal to the Hebrews. You breach right there. Vertical, connecting to a, an ELS of, of course, this is a, in the plain text right here, but this ELS of Yaakov connects to, and you see in the light purple letters there, is uh, Yaakov. So that is the Ebrit or the Hebrews. In the black and gold, you guys, in a time of distress, Bet Zarah, in a time of distress, okay? And then uh, we do have the word as an ELS, Wormwood, that is also in this. Now, this happened to be a, a, a separate table from what I'm about to show you that was presented in one of my code classes um, by one of my students. And she had found this anomaly and we're, we're, was presenting this anomaly. And I, I realized what text it was in. And so I said, let's take a look at what else is there. And so if we simply change the, sh the cylinder size, we're going to go from very skinny too moderately skinny, okay, with, with uh, my little vitamin bottle here as a prop. Okay, so we're going to go from skinny to moderately skinny. That is a skip of 39, and the way we do that is go to this icon here, and I can change the shape of the cylinder, and we get a completely different table, all in the same text. We follow. And here's what we have. Now, you can see in the blue letters, the red letters here, this is the two anomalies that we had in one column, the OTO and code of Yikua. But it comes up underneath a vertical anomaly of the long spelling of Nabiru, you guys. This is not an accident that this word crosses over in the end of days, okay? Because this is the time we're in right now, and we're, we're actively dealing with this, whether you know it or not, okay? There are many people who, who are expressing um, sleeplessness. They're talking about how they can't sleep at night or they're feeling a little agitated during the daytime. You guys, it's my personal opinion and my thesis that this is the electromagnetic energy that we're experiencing from something we cannot see right now. But we will see. We will all see this. How do I know that? Well, the codes are indicating that, you guys. This is going to be something that everyone experiences. Everyone is going to see the whole world. This is universal. Okay. Everyone is going to see this. Now, the unreligious and the, the pagan people like this, those that are scientifically and not religiously oriented, will use the term the biru. But those that are believers and understand the scriptures, and especially Isaiah 24, which there's a connection to Isaiah 24 and Numbers 24, you guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go read Isaiah 24. This will make more sense because we're talking about a binary star system. I get it. Some of you don't believe in all that because your cosmology, you believe that we are on a flat earth. So I don't know what to tell you, but I can, I can say this. The scriptures and the data points that I'm looking at indicates that there's something going on here. Now, whether this fits into your cosmology or not, you need to reconcile that. I'm showing you something that I believe is going to happen. I have full confidence the whole world is going to experience this. There's no escaping. And I don't want to scare you. I mean, that's not the point of this video. It's not scare you. It's keep you informed. Furthermore, if you are part of his remnant, you know his name, you know from scripture, you have nothing to worry about. He tells us in this time, in the time of distress, we call upon him. He is there for us. So keep that in mind. Now, the parable and then what it actually reveals from the dream that Joseph has and he shares with his brothers. Let me ask you this. If the brothers are the 11 stars and he is the 12th star, who is the sun and the moon? 
answer that, please, down in the uh, the chat down there. If you've come to the conclusion that this is the two matriarch and the patriarch, you are correct. This The sun and the moon is Rachel and Jacob. So if a star appears out of Jacob, what are we talking about? The Shamash. The sun. We are talking about the sun. And here it is encoded right here. The Shamash. Uh, the Shemesh. However you want to pronounce that. But, you know, the sun. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be a second sun come out of the current one that we have. But I find it really interesting that all of the visuals that people have had have something to do with our sun. And in my my research, personally, I've, I've come to the conclusion that the reason why they're obscuring the sky and that you know, we're seeing this with the sun, it, we can't see the Nibiru, is because it's obscured in the sun's brightness. But they're also you know, putting things in the atmosphere so to further obscure this. So it's very plausible that the sun is hiding this object, you guys. It's very plausible. And these people are not just seeing nothing. Now, granted, some of these things are lens flares and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, there's a second sun. All of the universes in that, that are basically what we know, they're just binary star systems in every one. There's two stars, not just one. Where's our second one? How come we can't see it? You guys, let me take you to this other table which is the discovery of Nibiru. Now, this is really interesting because it has the name Stitchens in it, who originally co coined this phrase uh, or, or word, Nibiru. Let me take that back. The word is also found in the Ethiopic text of the Bible, and it's in reference to, this, to the throne. You may have heard me talk about this before, especially in my code class, talking about what the word Nibiru means in Ethiopic. And we can find, you can find this on the internet, on YouTube. Nibiru means love came down, uh, from the throne, love came down, and it's connected to the throne. So if the kingdom comes, and there is a connection to the throne room and the kingdom and this planet, and there's a, a a pattern that has been established throughout the Bible that we can see when the sun stood still, um, the the time that Hezekiah uh, counted the steps, and we see this change in time, time going backwards, time going forwards. Something did this. Now, what I can tell you from the codes that we've looked at on this, we found the connection to Nibiru, Planet X, Wormwood. It's a cyclical event that happens. It's not every 3,600 years, you guys. The, the time changes every time it goes around because of velocity. Okay. When there's a three-hour eclipse, when Yeshua is on the cross, you guys, what does this? this? The moon does not eclipse the sun for three hours. It's for seven minutes. So when Yeshua is on the cross and there's an earthquake that happens and the sun is blotted out for three hours, and by the way, this, this happens at a particular part of the moon phase, if it's the moon. It was the wrong time for an eclipse at Passover, you guys. Hello? Something different is going on here. Here's what the answer is. It is Planet X that did this. It wasn't just Jerusalem that had an earthquake. It was the whole world. How do we know this? But, well, from other cultures, and they recorded it in their records. You know who felt... Who, who, uh, recommended that we, we search out other cultures was Velikovsky. This is the basis of Gil Broussard's research, you guys. Looking at other cultures, worlds in collision, the books that he wrote. It is very, and more than plausible. This is more than plausible. I believe we're looking at evidence. Look at this. This is a Torah code at a skip of 999 very small skip of the discovery of Nibiru encoded. The very year that I started talking about it, which was 2015, 2016, goes right across this table. The name Stitchin is here. Stitchin is here, uh, connected with the word war, 
you guys, um, I've, I've told you that it is my assumption, not assumption, my conclusion that uh, when this event happens, we're in the middle of world war. This is happening simultaneously. So we're going to see cataclysmic events at the same time of world war. It's the end days. Okay. Now this word is in the plain text three times. Mahomet, which is war. First connecting to the destroyer, war and destroyer going together. But also right here, a very interesting cluster of words. We have the Mashiach connected with war. Sitting on right on top of that, the name of the Mashiach, Yahushua. Also in the plain text here. In a time of distress, that was also in the last table. We have Kachav, the star, and judgments come together. The word Ibrim, which is the Hebrews. This is a signal. This is a sign for the Hebrews. We also have the date for 2024. It's also on the other table. I, did, I don't think I showed you that, but it's there. Uh, hey, Tob, Shin, Pei, Hey, which is the latter part of 2024. Wormwood also connecting with that right here in the top. This term also the destroyer that comes together. Also, the, the, the phrase seven days is here three times. Now, I don't know if that's an, something that we need to consider. It's very possible. What is the meaning of the seven days? Um, that's here. So let me just take you to the scripture where this cluster here happens. And hopefully this will give you a little, little bit of um, encouragement because you would, he's not a, an Elohim who just leaves us out the dry, you guys, warns us. And I believe that is a major reason why he reveals these things in the code. So we'll have full warning. Look what he says here. Crossing right over this, and this happens in Deuteronomy 4th chapter, verse 30, is where we see this. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn unto Yahuwah thy Elohim, and shall be obedient to his voice, for, you, for Yahuwah thy Elohim is a merciful Elohim, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy father. So it has nothing to do with you. Okay, this is about the covenant he made with our forefathers, which he swore unto them. Ask now, for the days are past, which were before thee, since the day that Elohim created man upon the earth. And ask from the one side of heaven unto the other whether there be any such thing as these great, this great thing or hath been heard like it. Did ever a people hear the voice of Elohim speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and live? You guys, there's never been another event like this the world's ever seen. Isaiah 24 has never been fulfilled. Go and read that, and you tell me when that was fulfilled. That is yet to come, and it's a cataclysmic event that will happen, you guys. But he tells us right here, he's merciful. He is a merciful Elohim. If you call upon him, he will save you. So I also need to point out that Abaddon, Abaddon, Right here in the red. Why is that? Well, we were talking about the book of Revelation, you guys. These are events that will happen. In the last video, I talked to you about the drying up of the Euphrates and the four angels that are bound there. That is, this is all happening right now. <laughs> never, never has the Euphrates dr dried up and fulfilled Bible prophecy. What is the second part of that? Well, we're going to see the kings of the east come toward Israel. There's going to be a war. And not just one war, this is a world war and a regional war that takes place. We're seeing it happen right now, you guys. So listen, in spite of all this, and when I'm when I'm this is about being aware and getting your house in order. You should be encouraged because we're going into the kingdom age here, you guys, and we're seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. So uh, this is what I have for you today, you guys. I want to leave it here.
and uh, please consider the things that I've, I've shared with you. And please comment down below. If you would like to help the, the channel, please like and subscribe. I'm very thankful for all of the subscribers that subscribed since the last video and all the likes that you guys have put on the last video has really boosted the numbers this past week. So I want to thank you for that. So until the next video, shalom to you. We will bless you and keep you. You guys get into your word and read and uh, find shalom there. Shalom to you.